Yo, what's going on guys? It's Cbrev. Welcome to episode 4 of What Would Brev Do? This is the series where we play an entire ranked seasons game from start to finish and I talk about what's going through my head the entire time. The series is designed to help you get better at the game and learn a little bit of the intricacies that I deal with on a game-to-game -game basis uh, while playing this game at a high level. So we are continuing our grind to World Series during the first ranked season. Same lineup as last time. We're out here sweating it, trying to make World Series, get that Don Trail Willis. And on the bump in this one, going to be an interesting one. We're going to be starting Alec Manoa. I got him as a no-sell out of my pack, so I've just been using him since I have him anyway. Um, this is a card that looks pretty bad to me on paper, but for some reason he's done okay. Um, you can see through 22.1 innings pitch, though, only 13 strikeouts. So he's very much a pitch-to-contact guy. Uh, he's very much someone who, when I'm using him on the mound, it doesn't really feel like I'm fooling my opponent too much, and I really just have to manipulate the speeds, uh, mostly with sinker and circle change up together, throwing them in the same tunnels, uh, trying to get people to make weak contact outs. That's kind of been my approach. I've also really only started using him in ranked um, starting in Hall of Fame, and since he does have pretty high hits for nine, uh, now that he's paralleled for me, I think he's got 102 or 103 hits for nine. Um, so that definitely plays well on Hall of Fame. I think Alec Manoa is probably a card that would not be as good on All-Star. Um, but you never know. You know, just just the dynamic of sinker circle changeup has carried me so far. So hopefully I can showcase that. Uh, but I, I have a feeling if I run into a really good player with Alec Manoa on the mound that he's going to get beat up a little bit. So... We are taking on someone with live series collections done, and we're also facing Dallas Keuchel, which will be an interesting perspective since in the last episode uh, we featured Dallas Keuchel as our pitcher. So we'll kind of talk about how we want to go about attacking him from the hitter's perspective. And this should be a pretty interesting game. This guy's got basically a god squad. Uh, luckily, we didn't run into Randy Johnson as well. So um, since the live series collection reward is a pitcher this year, uh, we didn't hit the one out of five, and we only have to worry about uh, we only have to worry about Utley and Thomas and Clemente and Maurer. <laughs> Why do I get the feeling Alec Manoa is going to get destroyed this game? We'll see what happens. And we're at Coors. Should be an offensive showdown. So as you guys saw in the last episode when we used Keiko, his control is insane. So he's absolutely a pitcher. Um, where you've got to be pretty patient, I think, early in counts, because you're very often, if you swing first or second pitch, you're going to be taking a hack at something that's, like, right on the black. And that was a terrible swing from us. I'm glad he got that out. That would have been so bad. <laughs> so Keiko's definitely a guy I like to work the counts against, because um, you're very often going to get a high-quality strike early in the count, something like that, that you can't do a whole lot with. Uh, so you might as well wait him out a little bit if the pitch isn't right down the middle and see if you can catch something later in the at-bat. So I imagine we'll be seeing a lot of pitches this game. Uh, I myself don't have a ton of reps versus Keiko as a hitter, so this should be pretty interesting. And so far we're off to a 2-1 count here with Jazz, so not too bad. A couple of sinkers inside here, so we got to be conscious of that, although slider away would be the typical sequence here. He went front door cutter. We swing super early because <laughs> we're protecting against the sinker. And now I wonder if he will go to that slider outside. And he did. Beautiful. So that's a classic sequence. Uh, we'll talk about it after. I think I can push this to three. And he got a pretty bad animation. Very close play at third. Perfect throw might have got me there. Um, and now with that infield back and poo holes up, we're just trying to hit a ground ball trying to put this in play so I'm being hyper aggressive here I want this ball in play I don't want to be in a spot where I can strike out so we're trying to swing early and often unfortunately now we're down 0-2 with a couple hard hit foul balls cannot strike out here and he's tried that backdoor cutter versus a righty twice so we'll keep that in mind got to take a hack there cannot strike out looking need this ball in play Needed in play. Pujols in the gap. It's better than in play. It's a double. And we touch Keichel up early. Um, but talking about that slider low and away to Jazz, um, it's a pretty typical sequence, especially with how fast my bat speed appeared um, on that front door cutter that he threw. We swung so early. It's kind of a natural reaction to kind of want to go back to the off speed there. 
because I might just flail at it. We were able to counter the counter, though. Uh, last two on count, he went sinker inside. It's a pretty safe pitch, so we're sitting on it. Luckily, he threw that outside. Easier take. I'm just going to take this now. I don't want to swing at a sinker inside that's a ball or a sinker outside that's a ball. So we're 21 pitches deep. This is a huge spot for Luis Robert against the lefty. Um, we're looking for stuff over the middle, but remember, we're trying to not swing at the stuff that's on the corners early in the count. A double play gets him completely out of the inning here, so we got to be a little bit careful at what we choose to swing at. That slider looked pretty juicy, but we're, our timing was all over the place. We'll see if he tries backdoor cutter again. Change up inside. We get very lucky and poke it past the third baseman for our second run. He's not too pleased about it. I probably wouldn't be either. And now I think I just slam it inside on a sinker here. Oh, I think it was early. Dang it. We were all over that. That was our pitch. <laughs> Now we're in a tough spot. Don't want to hit into a double play, obviously. And he throws a changeup right down the middle that we somehow still hit on the ground. And I am just the absolute king at hitting into double plays this year. I don't know what's going on, man. <laughs> but we get two on a wild inning. Most definitely not going to be enough, especially with the average that this man's Chase Utley is walking up to the plate with. And I'll try to kind of go through how I like to pitch with Alec Manoa, so... It's going to be a lot of change-ups surprisingly high and a lot of sinkers obviously low. So you can see belt high away change-ups, back-to-back pitches, same exact result. He swung over the top and early. Um, so that's really kind of the feature pitch that I think has carried me with Manoa. You can throw it outside as well. Uh, or Sorry, inside, so like over here to a lefty. We'll throw it outside to a righty here. But that pitch just tunnels so well with a sinker. Um, and his sinker and circle change look exactly the same out of the hand. They're about eight miles an hour apart. That's an unfortunate swing result there. He was late on the sinker. So really, <laughs> kind of a one-trick pony with Manoa. But this is what has worked for me so far. So um, I don't think I should throw a change up away here to Joe Maurer. I think we try to go sinker inside just for the mix-up. Maybe he takes it, maybe he doesn't. Uh, but it's kind of hard pressing thinking I'm going to get three outs this inning on that pitch. So we'll try to mix things up a bit here. And we do get his Joe Maurer to fly out to center field. So big momentum, momentum inning from us. We got through Thomas and Maurer. He didn't score. We're going into the second with a two-run lead. 28 pitches for Keichel in the first. So we're doing good. Again, back to the approach. It's got to catch a lot of the plate for me to want to swing early in the count because Keiko's control, people are just going to be throwing quality strikes a lot of the time. So trying to be a bit patient there. Even something like that is far enough outside where I don't really need to let it rip. And again, we're being conscious of the backdoor cutter. He goes slider down and in. He probably wanted that off the plate. Luckily for us, it caught the plate. We rip it for a Mike Piazza single. And we'll see what Brian Reynolds can do here. Again, patience. Don't want any double plays. Not going to do a whole lot with a pitch like that. So we're just waiting to see maybe if he misses his spot on something. And then once we get to two strikes, we'll try to just square something up or pick up on a tendency we may have picked up on earlier. See what he comes here. 2-1. Misses the front door sinker. I should probably swing away here. And I hit a ground ball for a double play. <laughs> Over the top of the changeup. That's honestly an insanely good pitch from him. Um, the up and away changeup gets me to swing over it. Uh, the reason I wanted to be semi-aggressive there is obviously with Manoa on deck. Um, if we could have pushed that to like first and second with the pitcher up, then we could have struck out or tried to bunt, and then we've got the top of our order with a couple guys on, but... Just didn't end up working out for us, unfortunately. And that could end up being a big spot in the game later on if we can't get the offense going again. So back to work with Manoa. You'll see me throw these kind of belt high slash high sliders as well. Uh, Manoa is very much a pitcher where you kind of have to be a little bit cute with your off speed because it's not very deceptive. And overall, he doesn't throw very hard in general. So you kind of have to pitch backwards a lot, feature the off speed a lot and then try to work in the sinkers and the four-seamers when you can. 
Um, I am going to challenge him with the sinker in off the plate here because it's kind of hard to lay off. And even though he turned on it, it was so far inside that we get a grounder for an easy out. So we're just kind of feeling each other out here. We'll go back to this belt high circle change. And he rolls it over early again. So now three ground ball outs on early swings on that pitch. So it's up to him right now to make an adjustment. But right now, the classic Alec Manoa pitch is working wonders for us. He did sit back on that one. Maybe threw it one too many times again. Um, and now we'll, we'll throw a sinker low just to, for the mix up. Good take. Let's try the same circle change spot, but inside. And the reason this pitch is so good is because, again, it's being thrown in sinker tunnels. So really, 90% of the pitches I'm going to throw with this card are sinker changeup. See if we can catch him front door here. He was all over it. So let's try the same pitch, but changeup style. And he was all over it. So good on him. He kind of uh, figured out our sequencing there. That was crushed. Kyle Tucker's a beast. And... <laughs> it's just so hard to sequence with this card mid. I feel like I'm just pitching to contact constantly and fighting for my life the whole game. Which I guess is probably fun to watch. Let's try sinker inside. Just missing the plate. And now I'm actually going to throw sinker in that same belt high tunnel away. And we do get him swinging late. Beautiful. And then something I like to throw here is the sinker even farther outside. And then I like to try to come back with a backdoor slider. Uh, he did take the bait on the sinker there, so we get another ground out. Unfortunately, Kyle Tucker takes his deep, cuts the lead in half. But we go back to work with the top of our order. Decent outing from Manoa. 4.5 ERA, can't be upset about it. And again, first Keiko, patience. Take the game slow. They're not going to give you a whole lot of good stuff to hit early in the count. They just aren't. He's too good at hitting the spots. So... We really got to work the counts and try to figure out what he likes to throw when and then take advantage at the time. Again, we're looking for this backdoor cutter. It would be great against the shift, too. He's tried it a couple times. Huge take there. See if he comes front door sinker. My bat's fast here, I think. I'm going to change up away. He hasn't thrown that yet. This is quite the battle at the plate already. The 2 2. There's that backdoor cutter, and we just swing under it. I think he was trying to hit the corner, and he accidentally left it up a little bit, which is sad for us, because if that hit the corner, we were hitting that out. So we swing under the backdoor cutter. We finally got it when we were looking for it. He's tried it a couple times for his righties, and unfortunately, we just weren't able to piece it up. Sometimes it's like that. Back to work with Jazz, who did work a walk for AB. Definitely 2-0 count left on left here. I'm taking this pitch all day. Would love another Jazz walk if he's going to give it to me. Nice comeback pitch from him. I'll probably end up taking this as well, just because the walk from Jazz with Pujols on deck is insane. That's maybe the worst pitch he's thrown all game. I'm kind of sad I was taking. Got to protect the sinker inside now. And we were still late. Being inside conscious there, but it's still so hard to pull the trigger early enough on that pitch. And Keiko's kind of dotting us here in the third. Definitely got to figure out the bats again, man. Two runs is not going to be nearly enough in this game. We got to uh, get the bats going again. Again, patience. Looking for stuff outside with the shift on as well. Maybe some like change-ups away or something. Sinker away. Decent pitch to swing at. And he did go change up away. So he's tried that twice this inning. It gets by him for a double. But again, that's just hitting against the shift. I mean, we have two strikes on us, so we're swinging at that anyway. But I love the shift so much, man. We just crushed a change up, so we're looking sinker inside again. And unfortunately, he threw it for a ball. Since we just crushed that, he may go outside slow now. Beautiful. And now we're kind of back to square run one. I don't really know what I'm looking for here. Maybe he floats us another middle in change up. 
There's the sinker again. We've hit it foul twice, so there's no way he's going to go to it here. Tried to tunnel me there. I wonder what he throws. Probably off speed still. <laughs> I actually swung so late because I just admitted that I was going to get rung up there. What a front door cutter, man. Good pitch. I'm surprised it even registered that swing, to be honest. Um, but he hasn't hit us with the front door cutter versus the lefty yet. He has done it versus righties. That was the first time he did it against the lefty, and it was a great spot for it. So good on him. I kind of have to be a little bit careful about swinging at that just because, wow, Seager's insane. <laughs> what was that? Because uh, if it's a sinker, I'm shattering my bat on it. So it's just an amazing pitch. That's just something you got to tip your cap on, honestly. And we'll move on. Try to hit him with the sinker there. Maybe mix up what we've been doing. And he was all over it. So our Manoa approach kind of fallen by the wayside here. He's definitely catching on. So we're going to have to try to mix some stuff up. We'll go home here just because he can't go to second anyway. And this is a spot where we can actually think about getting the pin up as well. Um, it's a gigantic spot in the game. And we're two wins away from World Series, so utilizing our pin to its full extent may be necessary. Obviously, best case scenario is getting a ground ball double play here. We've hit two of them ourselves so far, so maybe we can sneak one in. I think maybe I can get him to swing early at this outside changeup again. We did. We get a perfect throw from Reynolds, and we get behind the ball. Still got a bad animation. That is so tough, man. <laughs> Why do they throw the ball that slow if they get behind it first? That's sad. If he had came up gunning, we would have had him. We got a perfect throw there. Unfortunately, he gets an RBI sack fly on a very early swing. Very tough for us. And we're back to square one again. First four-seamer I've thrown all game. He takes it dead center. And we miss. Dang it, dude. <laughs> I keep blowing these early leads in these games, man. Dang, man. Manoa was not the truth this game. I don't even know what else I could have thrown there. I mean, I'm just overthrowing the changeup, so I have to try something hard. I thought I would mix it up with the uh, with the four seam instead of the sinker. Maybe he'd miss it with his PCI, but he did not miss it. And all of a sudden, even though I feel like we've been in control this game, here we are again, episode two, part two. We are suddenly way behind and fighting for our lives. Definitely need to get the pin up here. Um, the scenario where the pitcher gets up in this inning is a scenario where we probably have people on base since we're leading off with our five hole. So we will make sure we have that pin up in case we have to make a pinch hit and kind of go for a big inning here later on. We will stick to our approach, though. We've been hitting well. We've seen a lot of pitches from Keuchel. This is a very winnable game. We just have to keep doing our thing, and we have to pitch a little better. There was a sinker. He missed his spot. He tried to go front door, and uh, we were able to sit on it. He caught a little bit too much of the plate there. That's a great pitch to see with Luis Robert versus a lefty as well. So instantly come back with some momentum. Things you absolutely love to see. And again, Bellinger, shift on, looking for stuff outside to go the other way with. Swung too late at that. Kind of looked like a slider, but it was a cutter. There's the slider, and that's just shift hitting, man. You will be absolutely stunned how often people pitch you with off-speed outside with the shift on. And now he's maybe even thinking about a pitching change as well. Definitely looking like an inning where we're going to have to pinch hit. Maybe not. <laughs> Piazza just changed everything with one swing. We take the change up right down the middle into the left field bleachers and tie the game. And now we've already come back. So now we don't have to pinch hit because it's not nearly as big of a deal. We've caught all the momentum back. We're back to square one. Game's tied. We can go ahead and leave Manoa in and hope that he can just get a couple more innings for us. 
Good pitch. Hasn't thrown that one time. Frank Thomas does Frank Thomas things. And we beat it out. And then here's a spot. I think I was talking about this game earlier. Um, sack, bun sack bunts just don't work on this game for me. I'm over trying to do them. So in a force out situation like this, I am just striking out on purpose because I'd rather make one out than two, especially with no outs in the inning so far. And Buxton on deck. Uh, definitely want to give him a chance to hack with a runner on base. So we just take the L there, strike out on purpose, and it looks like he may go righty here. Which would make sense, it's a big spot. And we are looking at c -Sheck. Oh, he actually has the new c -Sheck. The new event reward that came out today. Surprisingly very similar to Keiko, except he throws a sidearm. So we're actually going to keep roughly the same approach. Um, just try to be patient early in the count and make sure we're not swinging at quality strikes. That was right there, and I swung late. Ugh. This is such a tough spot now, too. That's what we don't want to do. Hopefully we can beat this out. He actually just goes to first. He, that was actually probably the right play. I didn't see how close Reynolds was to second. But good on him for being aware of it. Bad at bat from us. Almost let it rip there. <laughs> I didn't think he'd go to it. Hitting against C-Shex a lot easier with a lefty than a righty, let me tell you. Got to watch out for the sliders inside here. Good splitter. Kind of fighting for our lives, this AB. Wow, what a pitch. Looked exactly like a front door sinker. Threw it on the black. Tip your cap. We weren't able to do anything against c -Sheck. Good spot by my opponent bringing him in there. We'll mound visit for some confidence here because I noticed it was low. And with C-Sheck due up, hopefully that's the only inning we see of him. Kind of depends for him, for my opponent, I guess, how he does in these first two at-bats. Whether it's worth pitch hitting. Hit him with another sinker off the plate. I can't believe neither outfielder is going to get to that. That is crazy, dude. <laughs> that was up in the air for so long. you got to be kidding me on that. Especially with Robert in center. That's a tough way to start the inning, man. I thought that was a lazy fly out for sure. Now all of a sudden we're in danger of being behind yet again. We'll try a fastball up. I feel like he might bite. Got to get this really high. Unfortunately, he fouled it off. You have to throw that pitch super high because with the PCI changes, they can actually get pretty high up in the zone swinging at it. And we get him to chase a circle change, maybe press in a little bit. And this is a spot where he for sure pinch hits. Here's where we start tracking his bench. So he does go Soto off the bench. So we'll cross that off our list in our mind. Moving forward through the game. Just so we can figure out who he's using, who he hasn't, who he could go to in certain spots. This is a very awkward spot to be in. Soto kills me. And we do get him swinging early, so... Despite the fact that we've kind of thrown it so many times, this circle change middle away versus lefties appears to still be working. Another early swing by him. We'll try to bury a sinker. Maybe we can get a one pitch out and get out of this. Good take. <laughs> Do I throw it again? I'll try sinker off the plate. He was sitting on it. His bat was so slow. I'm so glad I went sinker there. Okay, now we can work inside a little bit. Can't really throw a change up inside because last time we did it was crushed by Kyle Tucker. And Utley such a this is such a tough part of the order, man, for a righty. Utley into Cap, into Thomas, into Maurer. That's destroyed. It was a sinker, not a change up. I just don't know, man. I just don't know when he's going to turn around and sit back on one of those change-ups. Manoa having the worst start he's had in ranked for me so far, but I figured it might happen. And again, he's swinging early at that change-up, so I don't know, dude. I keep waiting for him to make the adjustment, but for some reason this pitch just keeps working, so it's a really tough spot to be in mentally because I just don't know what the right pitch is. Like, I can't 
Surely I can't just keep throwing that pitch all game and get outs, right? Tough spot to be in. That's a pitch we love to see with Pujols shifted. Change up away, first pitch. Unfortunately, we were not able to keep it fair. Love looking for cutters away against Devin, Devin Williams, too. Not my best swing. Usually people go screwball here. Lucky to foul that off. Being a little antsy myself here, I kind of need to chill. And we do get the cutter away and get the worst hit I've ever seen. How is the shortstop not in, able to get to that with the shift on? That's kind of wild. All right, we'll take our luck. I wonder when he will gas up the fastball here. People love to pitch backwards with Devin Williams, and I think when we get to a two-strike count, he may try to come with the, the cheese, maybe something here. I'm actually going to sit fastball here. It may cost me. Okay, that was an easy take. I think he will go to it this at bat. Backdoor cutter. Saw it the whole way. <laughs> Too many slow pitches, dude. Even though I was sitting fastball, his cutter's just so slow, I was able to react. So huge home run from Seager. This is an absolutely insane back and forth right now. I can't believe this game is going this way. It's only the top of the fifth, man. <laughs> this is insane. All right, back to square one yet again. Lou Bob versus Alrighty. Trying to be a little bit patient because the walk's are really good for us. We're already kind of at a disadvantage right on right here. But he's not going to give it to us. Will he finally go four-seam fastball here? Through a nasty screwball. If I didn't suck, I probably would have been able to take that. I don't know what that swing was. Moving on. Looking for stuff outside. For Belly. To go against the shift, as said earlier. That's a really easy take, too, when you're just looking for outside pitches. Couldn't keep it fair. He's giving them to us, man. Now we got to watch the screwball again. I don't know why I keep swinging when it's way off the plate. Just not seeing that pitch specifically very well. Change up. Wow. That was destroyed right at the right fielder, unfortunately. Surprised I turned on that. That was a very weird pitch. Unfortunately, two outs now in the inning. Piazza does not get shifted. And there was the four-seamer finally. I was kind of ready for it, but I missed with my PCI, and I was slightly late. Decent inning from us, though. We get a bomb from Corey Seager, and we get one more inning out of a Manoa. Kind of a good side effect of the fact that we didn't bat all the way around to our pitcher that inning. And Frank has done that twice to me now, man. So unfortunate, dude. Second time this game, he's taken a sinker low and in off the plate, swung late at it, and gotten a bloop single. And now this is probably where he crushes the changeup. He did not that pitch. Do I really throw it again? I feel like I have to. All right, he sat back on that one. Uh, we might have to go to the pin now. Man, that's so frustrating, that Frank Thomas hit, dude. This changes the whole inning. Such a bad swing. Anyway, we got to get over it. Trying to figure out if I can get a double play here. Another weekly hit ball. Gets through. And the game's tied up just like that, man. The back and forth is insane. I think I got to get away from Manoa here. Tucker and Ramirez worse versus lefties, so we'll mound visit. We'll give Manoa one more batter just to get the right on right versus Clemente. Hopefully this doesn't cost me three runs. He got me a double play, I think. Huge. Okay. The changeup worked again. Now I for sure got to go to a lefty, though. But uh, not Manoa's best outing, not his worst outing. We're keeping it in it. Keeping ourselves in it with the offense, and we'll go Billy Wagner here. He may pinch it. We'll see what he does. Gonna leave Tucker in. Oh, 
just how many outs he's and to that to is crushed the center on an early swing it's gonna be an RBI triple dang it man dang it dude uh I want him to swing early there he did swing early just crushed it now hopefully Billy can just get us out of this down one trying to feature a little bit more velo here with Billy too since Manoa doesn't throw that hard Fouls that off. Unfortunate. We'll try to go high fastball again. He did swing at it last time. Pretty good against short players as well. Didn't take the bait. Just need a lazy fly ball here, Jose. Help me out one time. Struck him out. All right. We escape only down one. Could have been a better inning. Our offense has been putting in work, though. We got a long four innings ahead of us. I think our cell, we ourselves are going to go Devin Williams next inning. We kind of need to go to our closer here. It's high enough leverage. We uh, don't want the game to get too far away from us, so I think going to our best reliever here with where we're at is the move. Barring something crazy like we score like six runs this inning and get way ahead. Your attention, He's going Chapman here. Less power versus left for Brian Reynolds, so it makes sense. It is going to allow us to get a free pinch hit with a righty, though, because of the three batter minimum. Hangs that slider inside. We take it in the gap for a double. This could be a triple as well. We'll see what animation he gets. No chance at a triple, but a solid leadoff double from Reynolds. And we will just straight up go Soriano here. Freebie pinch hit with the righty. I think he'll go fastball first pitch. Was outside. Against Chapman, I'm actually usually sitting off speed because when they do throw it, it doesn't always go where they want it to this year since his control is kind of sketchy. Uh, Chapman's definitely a guy where if they get too cute with the off speed, they can end up hanging one middle or just enough of the plate where it can get crushed. Good comeback pitches from him here. I think he'll still go off speed. Backdoor slider, and how did we miss that? <laughs> he tried to throw it on the corner again and accidentally missed up again, and we popped it up again. So sad, man. Oh, we were late. He told me I was good. All right, never mind. That was a bad swing then. Missed opportunity there. We need to get this run home. This bucks in at bat is huge. And I choked. Chased a slider and swung late at it. Can't tag here, obviously. We're going to be out by a mile. Now it's up to Jazz left on left. What a horrible sequence of events those last two at bats were. Need Jazz to come through one time. High splitter. Good on him. He did that with the high changeup with Keiko earlier. It's a good pitch. And I'm just flailing. Didn't see that pitch at all. Looked like a fastball inside. And that's a big deal that we didn't score there. Two innings now we've had. Uh, one was way earlier in the game, and then that one, where we had runners in scoring position and left them out there. Now we need the inning of our life from Devin Williams here. This is his second burn lefty off the bench, so it's possible he doesn't have any more. We will check it next time his pitcher spot comes up. Oh. And I think we'll throw the same pitch, the Manoa pitch. Maybe he rolls this one over. He did. What is this game? I mean, is he going to go the whole game without adjusting? I do not understand. Dude. YouTube comments, help me understand what's going on. First of all, 
applauding this guy for sticking with his approach. Because he is for sure sticking with it, man. <laughs> this is crazy, dude. There's no way I'm throwing it again. No shot. We'll go inside. You can see I kind of threw the cutter in a fastball tunnel there. He was sitting fastball, so he swung early at it. Same deal low. Bit of an easier take. And I guess we'll try the Manoa pitch again. I'm going to coin that phrase. Bell tie away circle change up is the Manoa pitch. One, two, three for Devin Williams. He did give us the inning of his life. He may have to do it again in the seventh. Whew. Who will we be facing? Class A. Makes sense. Class A is a great guy to face with Pujols leading off with the shift on because cutters away are very much a thing. So we will just try to go with the pitch. That one was a slider. We go with the pitch against the shift. That's exactly what we're looking for, man. That leadoff double is 100% approach. And he just baited us. Did he bait us? Okay, we're still safe. I'm hype, man. We're sitting cutter again. Oh, swung over the top. It's a good spot for us to swing first pitch. We just missed with our PCI again. Good swing. Bad swing. Okay, I need to freaking calm down when I get a guy on second base. Oh, I'm mad at myself. What was that at bat? Do I let it rip 2-0? Do I let it rip 3-0? Piazza on deck. Four-seamer. Backdoor slider, and we catch it, man. Two oppo bombs from lefties on backdoor pitches. So huge, man. That is such a relief we didn't choke another guy in scoring position. What a swing from Bellinger, dude. It's 9-8. to eight. It's almost 10-8. to eight. Man, we're going to see nothing but cutters and four seams this at bat, by the way. And we just swing under the cutter. All right, Devin Williams, I need the best inning of your life, part two. <laughs> this is a huge deal, though, man. Like, I mentioned how important it was for us to have our best reliever on the mound in the sixth. And we have our best reliever on the mound in the seventh as well. If we can get out of here up nine to eight going into the eighth inning, it's going to be absolutely massive for our chances. I need to get him to roll over on these cutters without sitting back on it. He needs to swing early. He did sit back on it. Buxton almost got there. I'm never diving for that. It's not worth it all in a one-run game, by the way. And this is just another spot. Do I throw another changeup outside? If he rolls it over like he has been all game, it's going to be a double play. Let's try it. He sat back. He sat back so hard he was late. This is so tough from a pitcher's perspective, man. Let's try to run the cutter low. Maybe get a ground ball. Got him to swing through it. Gigantic out. Obviously, Joe Maurer. <laughs> Huge out. Let's try it versus a righty. Lower than I wanted. Thankfully, he took it. Gonna try to pound him in here one time. Just one pitch. He was all over it, dude. Bad pitch. I'm lucky he pulled that foul. Good take. This is our best chance at getting a double play is him swinging at this cutter off the plate, so we'll try it twice. No shot, man. <laughs> there is no shot, dude. Uh, uh, 
I don't know what to say, man. Other than I guess we're in the same spot, so we could still get a double play on the same pitch. Oh, that is so crazy, man. That was destroyed. We go cut off here because I didn't get a perfect throw to third. He shouldn't tag anyway. Two on, two out. And we are facing Kyle Tucker, who's a single away from the cycle and has absolutely destroyed us this game. Could go lefty here, but I'm not going to. Devin Williams is my best reliever. It's not worth playing the matchup. We'll try to throw this more outside and low in case he's sitting on it. He was late again, so he was sitting on it. And I guess we'll try this low cutter again. It's the only thing that's worked for us this inning for a strikeout. He almost went. This is so intense, man. I almost want to throw it again. He really wants to hit it. We'll try it one more time. Good take. What do I throw here, man? This is a crazy game, dude. <laughs> Jeez. I gotta, I gotta try the Manoa pitch one more time. Pops it up. Let's go, Devin Williams, dude. The biggest two innings of his life. So good. Now we go Chapman into Classe. He might go lefty again here. He did last time versus Brian Reynolds. It would lock us into another righty bench bat. He actually is just going to go Kenley. So hitting against Kenley is definitely weird. The inside tunnel is so hard because you don't want to swing at cutters off the plate early in the count like that. So you're kind of just, in my opinion, you're kind of just forced to take the front door sinkers like that. And it just becomes a mind game of if they're going to throw which one where. I think he will go front door sinker again. He went cutter. Good pitch. Great spot. I could have maybe won that at bat on the second front door sinker that he left a bit over the plate, but I wanted to see a few more pitches. You could you could make an argument for me leaving in Devin Williams there too, but I'm not going to. Try to go the other way against the shift and swung early. Unfortunate. This is not the top of the eighth we want to see. We need to keep the, the offense moving. Bad couple of at-bats from us. I think I will just sit sinker here. I was still late. He threw it right on my PCI and I was still late. Just an absolutely horrible inning at the worst time. We're going to have to win it with our pitching. He's got a, a lot of righty bats still on the bench, so he could make a move here for Jose and the pinch hitter. He's not doing it. We're now locked in. He's going to get a free pinch hit with a righty off the bench. So getting this first out is going to be huge. Um, definitely don't want his pinch hitter to have a chance to go ahead. Put him ahead, I should say. I do think I want to challenge this guy with Chapman this inning. We'll go splitter here because it's 0-2. But in general, I think I do want to pound the heat. Because we've been a finesse pitcher the whole game, right? <laughs> the Manoa pitch. Change-ups away. All game. I think we mix it up here. I think we go right after him with the gas. Something he hasn't seen all game. Could work out, could not. We'll see. Next pitch misses way outside. He's early on the two seam. That's why we throw it as a two seam. Two down for Chapman, and we get Gary Carter out, which is a big deal because he destroys lefties. And we get the left on left with Utley here. I am going to go Manoa pitch with a splitter one time, then we'll go back to the cheese. 
You can see he was sitting fastball there. I think we have to come back to the fastball anyway here. And he's late. Chapman, huge inning. We go to the ninth, up one. Probably going to be Classe in the ninth. He's going Blake Trinan. So this is a pitcher we faced last episode. Two episodes ago, I guess. Um, lots of sinkers. Kind of the same deal as Kinley, honestly. Uh, with how, how much he's front door sinkers with Kinley versus lefties. I think I should try to let it rip at one of them here. That one was outside. I want to see a sinker in here. Oh, it's right on the black. It looked like a ball. Good pitch. And he did go cutter. So actually, same sequence as Kinley uh, that he threw to Brian Reynolds. So we were able to turn on the cutter there instead of being late. And now we're sitting inside sinker all day. Not lucky that went foul. Drynan's decently easy to steal against too. Double play is just an absolute nightmare here. That's why I'm thinking about trying to steal. Can't really do it with two strikes now. That's an absolute dot. I might have hit into a double play if I even swung at that, so that's not the worst take in the world. Just an insane pitch. Tip your cap. Try to get it done with Corey. There's the front door sinker. We can go to third here on Clemente, I think, unless he's insane. All right, first and third. Lubob at the plate. We could go Edmonds. I don't think it's worth. Lubob is going to give us a better chance to beat out a double play ball and roughly the same hitting stats as Edmonds versus righties anyway. We just have to be really careful. No double plays, man. Looking for some insurance, or as our friends down in the south would say, insurance. No matter how you say it, we know what you 2 and 0. Oh. Last time he went cut or 2 0, oh, I think. Yep. I don't know what to do here, dude. I should be letting it rip. I'm so scared to hit a double play. This has to be a sinker, right? Every time we're letting it rip. Oh, he threw it outside for a ball. Unfortunate. And he walked us. Holy cow, dude. Bellinger with the bases loaded. Already went yard once. We're sitting front door sinker again. That was lucky. That wasn't a first pitch out. Good mix up from him. It's too low. Great spot. Man, this is so hard. Fighting for our lives there. Fighting for our lives again. This is crazy. Up and in front door. Crush to right field as well. We should score. 95 speed. Man. That's as good a swing as you can take there, dude. That could have easily been a grand slam. That is so sad. If we lose by one or something, that's insane. Even if that was just a little bit over in the gap, it's three runs because we have 95 speed at first. That is such a tragedy. I'm going to pause. I have to get over that. I'm actually a bit tilted, and this is still an at-bat where we can completely change the complexion of the game if we put one in the gap. So I need to calm down. I can't do anything about that Bellinger thing now. we got to get it done with Mike Piazza here. We got to get more runs. We got to put one in the gap. Dang. Decent swing, honestly. Almost had good timing and just threw our PCI a little bit too far over. Checking his lineup here. I'm thinking about leaving Chapman in. Here's my thinking. So, Cap is basically a wash. They're just insane versus both sides. 
Um, if the cap makes an out, then Frank Thomas can't tie the game because there'll be no one on base. And then after Frank Thomas, we're looking at Mauer Trout, who are both worse versus lefties by quite a bit. So I think we test the waters one at bat with Chapman versus this cap. If we get an out, we leave Chapman in for three more batters. If he gets on base, we have to make a pitching change. That's our plan. One is outside, and it's a ball and a strike. Talk about the right guy at the right spot. They really need a rally, and this guy is someone you can believe in. And he makes an out. Okay, that's our plan. As crazy as this is, pitching to Frank Thomas with a lefty in the ninth of the game on the line. He's three for three. This is the right play, I think. We have better matchups next to at bats, and he can't beat us here. He can't even tie us here. And we're going to go right after him. And he pops it up to center. Huge from Chapman, man. We're going to go right after Trout as well. We're going to spam four seamers against Trout because he can't beat us either. Oh, this is Maurer. Never mind. Uh, my plan was to spam four seamers versus Trout and then go sliders versus Maurer. So we'll do the opposite. We'll still go slow stuff versus Maurer here. He swings early. Flies out to right, and finally, for the first time this year, I win a game that's close in the ninth. Man, our pitching at the end of that game, honestly, fifth inning, sixth inning on, I think we played that game almost perfectly. That was an insane game. Devin Williams gave us two innings. Chapman gave us two innings for the save. We come out on top. We're eight points away from World Series. What a game, man. I hope you guys learned so much, dude. So excited to be making this kind of content for you guys. Uh, you guys constantly tell me that you love it. So um, let me know what you thought in the comments, I guess. <laughs> We're going to go record another episode and hopefully make World Series and get Dontrell. So thanks for watching, guys. Take care. We'll see you in the next one.